It is a song by Brooke Liggett Wood, the one who is and uh, who is to come. Amen. Who was? Who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Alpha and Omega, beginning Amen. and end. In Hebrew, it's actually Aleph and Tau. Mm. We're, so, we're so familiar with the Greek because the New Covenant is in Greek. Yes. But in Hebrew, Jesus actually says, I am the Aleph mm. and the Tau. That's the Hebrew alphabet. Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega in uh, Greek, first and the last in English. Mm. Yeah. And he is everything, Malungi, everything to us. You remind He's me when everything. he appeared to uh, John at the Isle of Patmos. On the Isle of Patmos. Yeah. Alpha and Omega. I am Alpha, I'm Omega, mm. I'm big. And he was in a white apparel, mm. eyes mm. Flaming, fi mm. of, uh, flaming fire. His apparel white was glistening white. Mm. Thank God we know Jesus and mm. thank God we're serving him. Hey. And a good morning to every single person tuned into the brunch to lunch show with uh, Malungi. It's a joy. I'm always counting it a glad time, a fun time to spend here with you, especially as we go into the scriptures, look at the word and chat about what the Lord is doing in KZN. Mm. This 2022. Mm. I have to inform you about some important things. Mm. On the 4th of October yes. is one of the most important dates in <laughs> KZN. <laughs> I think I know that Let's date. Let's see if you know that date. What happens on the 4th? It's of someone's birthday. <laughs> on the 4th of October is my birthday, right? Yes, yes. But on the 5th, on the 5th is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Mm. It's the day when the high priest went into the holiest of holies right. and right. offered the, the blood. He was only able to do it once in a year. Yeah. So the 5th of October yeah. is in Hebrew, they say Yom Kippur. In English, the day of atonement. Sounds like someone's name. Yeah, so it's, so it's a very, <laughs> very, very significant day. It's the only day the high priest mm -hmm. goes into the holiest of holies. That's one. On the 9th of October, the mm. 9th day of October to the 16th day of October right. is the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. So we are entering into, as we close September and enter into October, we are entering into some very significant biblical times. Mm. It's a very important season. Right, right now, there are some, uh, Malungi, I would, I'm going to be teaching about these things at church right. during the month of October. Mm. But as I'm speaking to you right now, in the nation of Israel, mm. there are some things that are brand new developments taking place now, this September. Mm. And I'm going to chat to the church about that when we enter into October, when we get into the Feast of Tabernacles. Because everything happening is prophetic. Mm. Everything happening is mm. in alignment with scripture. Right. It's confirming so much mm. of scripture. And it's bringing to pass everything that's going to usher in what we know as the end times. Sure. The prophetic purposes of the Lord right. for the last day church. Right. All taking place. So this time now, it's so exciting. Mm. Over and above my birthday, it's Yom Kippur, which yes. is a biblical season. It's the Feast of Tabernacles for that one week. It starts on one Sunday, ends on the next Sunday, mm -hmm. from the 9th mm -hmm. to the 16th. Right. That's, a, that's so important. That's mm -hmm. so sick. S nations of the world are gathering in Israel during that week. Right. All over the world, born-again Christians will be gathering in Israel to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Interesting. Which is, which is so amazing. Right. So I'm looking forward for that. And all these things are happening now. So in your heart, what do we do? We celebrate Passover. Yes. We understand what Passover is. Mm -hmm. Then we celebrate Pentecost, yes. which is somewhere in the middle of the year. Tabernacles draws the year to a close. Mm -hmm. The Feast of... So there's three celebrations, three observances, three pro prophetic purposes on God's calendar, not on the world's calendar. Right. We open the year with Passover. Somewhere in the middle of the year, we celebrate Pentecost. Mm. Now, as the year closes, the last quarter, 
we celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. Right. Which is so important. So I'm inviting you precious people, if you haven't been to Cornerstone, to come join us mm -hmm. in the month of October as we examine Pentecost, mm -hmm. the prophetic purposes inside of Pentecost, um, mm -hmm. Tabernacles, and what God is doing in the nation of Israel right, right now, 2022. What we say fully, say as yes, believers, uh, while these celebrations are taking place, what is our part? Our part is to observe it. Right. It's it's not just a celebration. They all like the Hebrews observe Passover. Yes. Do we as Christians observe it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The Hebrews observe uh, Sha'avot, which is Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Do we observe Pentecost? Yes. The Hebrews observe uh, tabernacles. Yes. Are we supposed to observe it? Much of us in the church today, the modern church, have very little biblical understanding of tabernacles. Mm. What is it? Why do we observe it? Should we observe it? All those things we'll be answering in the month of October. Right. And I'm going to be teaching extensively at church. So there's an invitation I'm extending. If you don't have understanding, you're not too sure what it is. Pastor, I'm confused. I heard the word tabernacles. Mm. I heard of the tabernacle of Moses. Mm. But what is the feast of tabernacles? Then we're going to leave that Bolungi for October. Mm. We're not going to answer it now. Right. But I'm inviting you to come where I'll take you line upon line, precept upon precept into the scriptures and show you God's prophetic purpose inside tabernacles for the born again new testament believer mm -hmm. what does it mean for me do we feast as well we do we celebrate it absolutely remember the word feast right. in hebrew is not what we suppose it is in in, in english. english it means to eat to eat yes. in hebrew in it language. actually means appointed time mm. the word feast in Hebrew means right. an appointed time. Mm. It simply means God has created an appointment with us right. during tabernacles. Right. He is expecting us to meet Him. He is expecting us to prepare to see Him. Right. The point is we're thinking about food. Mm. We, when, we, when we say feast, we think eat. When God says feast, He means have you set your watch? Have you marked the calendar to come and meet with me during this time? Oh, for because in the Old Testament, they would meet with God at a particular... Absolutely, oh, sweetie. Absolutely. Right, right. That is a... The Feast of Tabernacles simply mm. means a designated appointment, appointed time right. for the nation of Israel to see Yahweh. Mm. And everyone assembles for the Feast. Because everyone's called to meet him. Now, the feast is that uh, feast. The feast is, is an, feast? it's no, no eating. Oh, okay. It's the okay. appointed time where God now comes down to the earth. Mm. And when he comes, he brings something with him mm. to give to his people. Mm. And it's not uh, a mutton biryani and okay. a poiki kos and oh, so on. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's, not a, it's his plans and his purposes that he mm. ushers into the lives of his people. So we'll talk about that when, when we get there. But now, I want to chat about the school. Yes. Do you sense in your heart God calling? Mm. Do you have a desire in your heart for the ministry? Mm. Um, have you ever felt inside of your heart a stirring to serving, to do something? Mm. And people have those questions. At Cornerstone, we, we've been discovering as years go on and as months go on and mm -hmm. so on, mm -hmm. I'm beginning to find out what we're doing. We now realize that we are training and developing leaders every day. Right. That's right. now the purpose. If I step back away from what we're doing mm -hmm. and I have to do an examination on what is Cornerstone Church doing currently? Mm -hmm. What have we been doing for the last five years? Mm -hmm. We are involved in recruiting, training, and deploying people. Right. That's all we're doing. Right. We're recruiting people. For the work of the ministry. We train them once they come. Right. And we send them off into the harvest field. Mm. So we, we first recruit them. The recruit, recruitment process takes place here at the station. Mm. 
we send a call out. Mm. Do you sense God calling you? Do you have a desire in your heart? Mm. There are people that say, yes, I do. Mm. Then they come. Then they go through training. Wow. Once the training is complete, we send them now into the field to do the work of the kingdom. Mm. Now, there's a story here in the scriptures in Matthew 14. Jesus is on the shore with all the multitudes of people. Yes. He sends his disciples away on a, on a boat mm. to get to the other side, and he goes off to pray. The scripture says, in the fourth watch of the night, Matthew 14, 25, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Mm. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled because human beings don't walk on water. They were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Jesus said, come. Now the question I'm asking everyone tuned in, who did Jesus say come to? Did Jesus say come to Peter? Or did Jesus say come to every single one of the disciples on that boat? Did the call go to one man or to every man? If you read the scriptures very carefully, the call here does not go to Peter. All right. The call, to, if the call was to Peter, then Jesus would have said, "Come, Peter." All right. He does not say, "Come, Peter." He stands in the middle of the ocean. The wind is blowing. The waves are tossing the ship, and the Lord's not interested in just saving Peter's life. Mm. He's interested in calling everyone into His plan and to His purpose. To a place of safety that's with him. So when he says come. Only one man responds. Hmm. And the one man responds. Because he responds in faith. Right. He doesn't think. Peter is a guy. That jumps first. And then thinks. That's, <laughs> that's Peter's nature. He jumps and then. As he's in the air. He thinks now where am I going to land. So. That's one of the <laughs> that's one of the qualities of faith. Faith does not consider every little detail. Faith simply responds to the word of Christ. Did he say come? Yes. If he said come, then that word come will carry me. That word will sustain me. That word will prevent any disaster from visiting me. So here's what I want to ask you that are on air listening this morning. The Lord has said, come, not just to Mervyn Naidu. The Lord has said, come, not just to Malongi Miende, but the Lord has given a call to every single one of us. He hasn't called one person. He's called all of us. But from all of us, there are certain people in life that respond to that call, that step out in faith. Those are the vessels that the Lord eventually ends up using. Right. So if you have the desire in your heart, Melinda, if you sense something in your heart and you hear the word come, mm. you hear the opportunity being made available to you, your response should be instantaneous like Peter. Right. Lord, I'm ready. I'm right. jumping out of this boat. I'm walking to you. Whatever happens, you will carry me. Mm. And the Lord sustained Peter. Peter and the Lord end up walking on the water to the land. It's a miracle. Peter sank maybe for a moment, but he covered much of the distance. He, he, he did slip when he looked at the waves, when he considered the wind, the scripture says, he began to sink. He didn't drown, he began to sink. He didn't get sunken, he began to sink. Mm. And the Lord simply stretched out his hand and pulled him up. That means, Malungi, he covered much of the distance. He literally walked on the water towards the Lord. And hands distance away, he began to sink. And the Lord simply pulled him up. Now when the Lord pulled him up, 
Did the Lord give him a belletta ride? Did the Lord put him on his back and carry him? Did the Lord cradle him in his arms like a little baby? Or did both of them now walk on the water? So herein lies the miracle. If you are listening to me this morning, and you sense God calling you, I'm saying to you, God has called every one of us. Only those of us that are willing to heed the word of the Lord, we step out of the place of comfort while everyone else sits in the boat and says, Ooh, Jesus, I'm not coming out from this boat. Right. Uh, 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 uh. Let, the, let Peter go. It's for Pastor Marvel. Yeah. Don't, don't, it's not just for me. I'm coming to the end of my, towards the end of my journey. Mm. Who's the next generation the Lord is, is raising up? Mm. There is, I firmly believe, Malungi, there is a Joshua generation that the Lord is stirring up now. Mm. Young people, mm. names that are unknown. Mm. The new generation is an unknown company of people. Right. We don't know where they come from. We don't know what their names are. We don't know what their backgrounds are. But God's stirring their hearts. I am here on behalf of the Lord saying to you that are listening to me, God is calling you. Right. Like me, many years ago, I responded. I heeded the call. I stepped out in faith. I responded. I went. I found a Bible school. Right. My church did not encourage me. My church encouraged me to go to a university, complete my degree. My parents wanted me to become a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. But in my heart, I knew exactly, I could hear like a loudspeaker in my heart, the call of Christ. Mm -hmm. No one could hear what I was hearing. Right. No one sensed what I was sensing. No one felt what I felt. Mm -hmm. No one understood how, what was going on in my heart. My family sent, my mother sent me to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist asked me, what day, what year is this young man? What day is this young man? I told him, listen, before you go on, I'm enrolled in a university. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just that I do not want to pursue a career in medical science. Wow. I want to pursue a career in God's kingdom. Now, when you say that to the world, they think something's wrong with you. Mm. So that psychiatrist then presented the report to, to the police and said, no, there's nothing wrong with this guy. He just wants to pursue a different career. Mm. So you may be feeling like that. Maybe the people around you don't understand the desire you have in your heart. Mm. Maybe the people in your around your life don't understand what the Lord is saying to you. Mm. But you, if you are willing, if you are able, if you're obedient, if you follow him, then God will do great and mighty things. The scripture says, if we are willing and able, we eat of the fat of the land. Mm. You take your life, you will become a vessel worthy of the master's use. Sure. Even this, I, I, I was going to ask you. Yes, ma'am. Because um, one may be hearing uh, that calling, but not sure if it is God. Or if it is self, or if it is, you know, when you're in the middle I of it all. I was there, Mulungi. I was. Wow. I asked everyone, every pastor I met, mm. do you think God is calling me? <laughs> do you think God has a purpose for me? They must have thought I'm a madman. And mm. um, many of the people will not know. Mm. Whatever is going on in your heart mm. is something private and personal between you and God. People around. You have to have very sensitive people around you. You'll have to have very prophetic people around you wow. to recognize God's hand on your life. Mm. And I did. Thank God I met prophetic people. Mm. Thank God God sent prophets in my life. Right. When they came out of the blue and said, hey, young man, God's called you. Right. Young man, there's an anointing on your life. God's going to do this. I got cassette tapes. Right. Where people prophesied a clear word mm -hmm. over my life that, that confirmed right. in the midst of my own internal chaos. Mm -hmm. I was confused. I guarantee you this much. When God calls you, you're going to get confused. Right. 
because your mind is going to play tricks on you. I asked myself the question, you know, am I, is, is God really calling me? Yeah. If God is calling me, why isn't my pastor supporting me? Mm. Because my pastor never, never supported me. Right. My pastor told me, if you want to go to Bible college, that's your business. Right. Uh, if you, if you, I went there to, to the church to ask them to help me to pay my Bible college fees. Mm. They told me, no ways. Mm. We're not paying, we don't see God calling you. And over and above that, your parents, my parents' fellowship, they, your, parent, your parents want you to study. So go and study. So you may be in that difficult place, or you may be in a blessed place where your parents have supported you. Up to today, today is 2022, my family, my siblings, my mother that's still alive, none of them support me in ministry. God raised a family around me. God sent people into, and you have to make peace with them. You have to come to, if you're looking for your family to support you, your uncle to support you, auntie to support you, uncle Naidu to support you, your grandfather, you, you forget it. You, you, you're not going to find the Lord. You've got to hear his voice, pursue the call, walk by faith, not by sight. And you'll find out you'll get to my age, 52, and the Lord has carried you. The Lord will establish you. The Lord will build you. The Lord will sustain you. But the journey has to begin somewhere. Is it confusing, Melinda? Yes. And initially, it's going to be a challenge in your heart. But you unmistakably, you'll hear that, that voice in the, on the inside of you. And pray and say, Lord, send people. I'm on radio right now as a voice. I'm an encouragement to those people that sense that call. In whatever capacity, you may be saying, I want to serve the Lord full time. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I can't serve him full time now. I want to do it part time. Yeah. I'm running a business and, and I'm doing this. Oh, I'm still at school, still at university. Whatever part it is, mm -hmm. begin the journey. Right. You have to you have to start somewhere. And the school of the spirit is the best place because it's, it's a platform where you can begin right. your journey to fulfilling God's purpose in your life. Mm. And because I have walked this journey, Malunga, and, no, and I know how difficult it is, we have still kept the school of the spirit mm. free right. of any cost, no registration fees. No monthly tuition fees. There's no fees whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And you need to simply WhatsApp 074-841-5887. And our team will respond to you on that WhatsApp line. And we'll tell you how you can become part of the 2023 academic program. And that number again is 074. 841-5887. Gundisi, thank you so much for coming in. And no, uh, of course, School of the Spirit is graduating. The 5th of November at 8.30, 5 November. 5 November. Please, you're going to be there with us. Eh? Yes, yes. Absolutely. We are looking forward to the graduation. Uh, second, that is the second years and the... That's the uh, second years, the third years and the fourth years. And the fourth yeah. years of graduation. It's going to be an, an amazing wow. time. Don't miss it. Amen and amen. Yeah. And for those that will just love to attend... The You're more than well, don't, a whole lot of people ask me, can we come and peep and see what's mm -hmm. going on? You're more than welcome to peep in and see what's charge, going on. Right? It's free of charge, there's yeah. no cost. First come, first in. Amen. Amen. The devil is a liar, Jesus is Lord, and you are more than a conqueror. Amen. God bless.